Rain, Rain by Anne Martin Chapter 13, At the End of the Day The routine for after school is that Uncle Weldon picks me up at 2.42 p.m. and drops me off at my house between 2.58 and 3.01. Rain always greets me by jumping up and down when I open the door, licking my hands and face, and sometimes barking. Usually after that we sit on the porch for a while, but if it's rainy or chilly, then we do not sit on the porch. The end of the school day, number 35, we do not sit on the porch. It's foggy and cool, so we take a walk that lasts only 6.5 minutes. Rain pulls at her leash when I try to turn her around, and I know she would like a longer walk, but it's too damp and muddy for that. I'm going to look through the box, I say, as Rain reluctantly follows me back to our yard. On a shelf in the coat closet is a box, a hat box. The top and bottom are held together by a white satin braid. The braid is fraying, which leads me to believe that the box and the braid are old. Also, the box used to be blue, but over the years the blue has faded to a lighter and lighter shade. Now it's pale gray. Inside the box are things that belonged to my mother before she left. My father doesn't care if I look through the things, so I look through them approximately every four months which is three times a year. Four times three equals twelve. I drag a chair to the closet, reach up high for the box, and lift it down carefully. I set it on the kitchen table. Before I open the box, I study the outside of it to see if I can find any clues to my mother. But there's nothing. The box always looks the same, except that the color gets lighter and the braid gets fuzzier. I wish my mother had written something on the box, something like, These things are important to me, or gifts for Rose, or even just treasures. But there are no words or clues of any sort. I don't even know if the box belonged to my mother, or if it's just some box my father found for storing her things. My father won't talk about the box or its contents anymore. I slide the braid aside, remove the top of the box, and look in at the familiar items. One by one, I take them out. I set them on the table in a row from left to right. I always start with a necklace that has a silver bird's nest hanging from it. Inside the nest are three pearls pearls that are fake and are supposed to be bird's eggs. What does the necklace say about my mother? Maybe that she's a person who likes birds or bird's nests or bird's eggs. Next I take out the seashell that looks like a tan cone and is called an auger. My mother must like augers, too. She likes birds, birds' nests, birds' eggs, and augers. The third item I take out is a photo of a black cat. Written on the back of the photo is midnight. I don't remember having a cat or any pet before my father brought Rain home. I study the cat some more. My mother likes birds, birds' nests, birds' eggs, augers, photos, and black cats named midnight. After the photo, I examine two pins. The first is a little silver R for Rose. I wonder why my mother didn't take that with her, but maybe she didn't want to be reminded of me. After all, she left my father and me, so why would she want to think about us? The second pin is the kind called a hat pin. I know these things about the pins because when I was very small, Sometimes my father would look through the box with me and tell me about the items in it. He won't do that now, but he used to, and that is how I know that the R stands for rose and that the second pin is a hat pin. It looks like a very big needle, and attached to the end where the head of a pin should be is a tiny clock. The clock doesn't work. The hands are just painted on. They point to 715. Once I asked my father if there was any reason the clock reads 715. He said no. I wonder if my mother likes homonyms. I wonder if she likes prime numbers or rules or words. I wonder if she left because I like those things. The last items in the hat box are a nickel with a buffalo on it, a tiny square of newspaper announcing that Elizabeth Parsons wed Wesley Howard in the First Presbyterian Church, in Hatford. The hospital bracelet I wore when I was born and a scarf with a picture of a rose on it. I wish I knew, knew, knew more about my mother. 
I do, 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 no, no, what she looks like. There are two pictures of her on the table by the couch, but I wish I knew something else besides the fact that she likes birds, birds' nests, birds' eggs, augers, photos, black cats, named midnight, pins, the letter R, clocks, 715, nickels, buffaloes, her wedding announcement, my hospital bracelet, scarves, and roses. I look at the clock on the kitchen wall. I have three worksheets for homework tonight. It's time to start them and then start dinner. I put my mother's things back into the box in reverse order, starting with the scarf and ending with the necklace. And then I put the box back on the closet shelf. It's later when I'm adding Rain's My Pet Dry Food to her My Pet Wet Food that I turn on the radio and hear the weather forecaster say, Approaching storm. Hurricane Susan is expected to make landfall in three days' days and will be of epic proportions, a superstorm that could become the storm of the century.